everyone welcome to our channel students homeopathy and let's learn together today in this video we will discuss the important features of homeopathic medicine ignatia amara or the important features of an ignatia patient commonly the ignatia patients are the chilly patients mentally the ignatia patients are more altruistic or unselfish their emotions predominate over their intellect or reasoning we can say they are emotional fools due to this reason they become losers many a times they are not at all practical or reasonable dr kane has described ignacia in his lecture on matter medica like this he mentions ignacia as a sensitive girl though she would not let anyone know but her mother knows it she falls in love with a married man she lies awake in nights soaps she says mother why do i do that i cannot keep that man out of my mind ignacia personalities are highly esteemed but having full of sentiments that's the reason they are vulnerable to grief especially suppressed grief they can sacrifice themselves for the sake of others As we all know ignacia is a very good remedy for acute ailments from suppressed grief suppressed anger indignation and fear So let's discuss a practical case Once a 12 year old boy came to our clinic with his father He was walking on one leg and the other leg was flexed at the knee and he was complaining of pain on that leg while extending and stepping on the floor on inquiry we found there was no history of injury also no visible pathology was observed the onset was sudden and the pain was of neuralgic type while inquiring further it was traced that there was some mental trauma it was found that he had a conflict with his best friend and for that he waved for a long time but not in front of others one dose of ignacia 200 was administered on his tongue and he was asked to rest for a while within 15 minutes he walked out of the chamber normally without any assistance and without any pain So ignacia is a very good remedy for suppressed grief. In a similar instance, a girl of about 3 years old suddenly started crying and could not able to raise her left arm and not allowed anybody to touch or examine the arm. She continuously kept it hanging down and did not let it move. For the whole night she behaved like this. every time someone touches the arm she starts crying on inquiry there was no known injury she was under strict observation of parents and caretakers even while playing according to her mother she was playing normally and uh, suddenly started behaving like this without any injury now it was very important to find the mental elements that caused her to suffer it was found that the mother got frightened for a small reason after that instance she breastfed the child and within an hour the pain started now note that though the fright was for a brief period only it was intense enough to bring disharmony to the mother and it affected the child as she was still being breastfed the child was prescribed one dose of ignacia 200 and also the mother because the mother was also in a state of imbalance here we can note that medicines that are given to the mother work wonderfully on the child through the mother's milk in footnote to the aphorism 284 of 6th edition of organon of medicine 
Hanuman has emphasized prescribing medicine to the mother while treating the children who are being breastfed. He writes, The power of medicines acting upon the infant through the milk of the mother or weight nurse is wonderfully helpful. Every disease in a child yields to the rightly chosen homeopathic medicines given in moderate doses to the nursing mother. But in this particular case, the child was grown up and the frequency of breastfeeding is very less. That's why the child was also given the medicine. Now, the question may arise, what will we do if uh, due to some mental ailments in the mother, both mother and the breastfeeding child fall ill and based on the totality of symptoms, mother indicates one remedy while the child indicates another? The answer is, both should be given their respective individualized remedies separately. Now, again come back to our topic of discussion, Ignacia. The individual who is constitutionally Ignacia will seldom need any other remedy through the whole of his lifetime except in acute cases where the different medicines may be needed based on the acute totality. Kent has mentioned it lecture 6 of his lectures on homeopathic philosophy like this. Do you suppose because the disease has now progressed into tissue change, the organs are breaking down and the man is going to die, that this has changed that primitive state? The man needs the same course of treatment that he has needed from his babyhood. We may find Ignacia to be very artistic. That is, attitude for drawing, painting, sculpting will be there. They are fastidious, amorous and anxious about health. These are some important mental features. But these are not the must for prescribing Ignacia. Without the presence of these, we cannot simply exclude Ignacia. Another important feature of Ignacia that needs to be mentioned is swinging of moods. Ignacia patients are emotional and they have swinging of moods. They are easily affected by grief, especially by suppressed grief. They are now happy and the very next moment they are sad. We cannot predict how they will behave or react in the next moment. In extreme conditions, they may reach the extent of suicidal attempts, self-destructions like striking their head on the wall, cutting their own veins, etc. They are not stable-minded. However, there are other medicines like Staphysagria, Silesia, Carcinocin, etc. which are, though very emotional, are stable-minded and quite reasonable or practical. So that's all for this video. If you have not yet subscribed our channel, please subscribe it now and also click on the bell icon and select all so that you will not miss any of our informative, educational and interesting videos on homeopathy. Please provide your feedback in the comment section. We will love to answer your queries on this topic. Thank you for watching.